Hello everyone, it's Ivy Obasi here. If you don't know me, um, then welcome to my channel. I have a few um, workout videos and things like that up, but that is not why I'm here today. Today I'm here to basically start giving what God has given me um, to the body of the church. So there's, there's gifts that I have. Um, I am a seer. Um, I'm prophetic. That is my gift that God has given me. Something that I've had since I was a young girl. I'm 35 years old now and I have fought and fought and fought God about this gift. Um, just recently within the past two weeks when I was actually supposed to be talking about what I'm talking about today, I was like, no, instead I'm going to, you know, post workout videos and things like that. So I wasn't necessarily moving in obedience. But um, just to give you a little background, um, like I said, I have a seer's gift. I see in the spirit. I see in the spirit naturally and spiritually, spiritually in the natural and then spiritually in the spirit. And um, I've had a lot of different experiences um, spiritually. And I've also gone back and forth with my faith um, before I actually for real seriously gave my life to God four years ago um when he he showed me who he was um and that and my life did a complete 360 and I'll I'll give that testimony here um you know within the next few weeks or so but I just want to come to you guys and um be obedient to God and his holy spirit and what he has purpose for me um as an individual here in this earth in this world um, to give back to others and that's in the gift um, of prophecy so what God had released me to in the past couple of weeks was to start sharing all of the prophetic words that he's been giving me over the years over the years so I just want to be obedient and um I went through basically like a discipleship so God brought me to one place he saw me and then once I responded to, to him, then he called me. And I mean, we're all called for different purposes and reasons, but I was called. Um, and now I've been chosen. And I, I felt a couple of months ago, God said we were, I was being chosen and set apart. And then from there, he, he just told, told me recently within the past two weeks that now I'm being sent. So if you don't know anything about having a journey in a relationship with God, then let me just tell you that when God makes a move, he makes a move. And um, you really have to be obedient and just listen to him and um, really just seek him because it's not always easy. It felt easier for me to advertise um, marketing and things like that or to tell about my weight, weight loss journey or to market about real estate and things like that. But it's a lot harder for me uh, to do what the Lord has called me to do sometimes because it requires so much. And um, another reason, too, is because I want to glorify him and I don't want to make any mistakes. So sometimes instead of, you know, doing what he's told me to do, I worry about making mistakes and not do it or take too long. So anyway, make a long story short, I'm here today to start doing what God has called me to do and release these prophetic words into the earth. Um, because every time he's given me something that was prophetic, whether it be for a person or something that God has shown me or something he has instructed me to do, I can, I'm telling you that every single time it is manifested and God is edified in the end. He, his word never lies. It never returns to you void. It never returns to me void ever. So I just want to be obedient, even though I'm a little frightened. Okay, this is my first time. Uh, well, no, it's not my first. Actually, a while ago, a couple of years ago, right when I, you know, first I say came to God and got saved, um, I had people asking me to speak at engagements. And um, I think now God has actually released me himself. Um, because, you know, the gift makes room for you. People notice the gift that's in you um, and they'll pull on it. But now God is telling me, OK, I prepared you for such a time as this. So I just want to come to you guys and give you what the Lord has given me. So if you're rushed for time, you know, maybe down in the description box, I'll let you know, you know, when I'm going to get to a particular word or something like that. 
But if not, just sit back and just please enjoy God and listen to him, not to me as Ivy, because it's not about me, but it's about glorifying him and lifting him up. And I want everything in me to decrease right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want you guys to hear God when I speak. Um, the first thing that I wanted to go over, um, I just have my Bible here. Uh, I do believe this is King, King James version. Yeah, it's KJV. So this is KJV version. And I'm just going to go over the part after, um, discipleship when Jesus, you know, uh, chose some of his, his disciples. I'm going to go over, um, uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter um, the th starting at the 13th verse. And this part is basically titled, where is it right here? God's people make a difference. And I'm going to start there because I think that's a, a good segue into, um, what it is that God has called me to do. So I'm just going to read four verses. God's people make a difference. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost is savor wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to cast out and to be trodden under feet of men ye are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and it giveth light unto all that are in the house, in the house of the body. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So I started off with that because um, we are all the salt of the earth. And if we, if we lose our saltiness, if we lose the reason why God made us, then what good are we? What good are we to others? How do we glorify God? So I'm glorifying God right now in my body, in my spirit, by just giving the words that he's given me and coming to you guys um, just to remind you to keep your saltiness, just to remind you that everything that we do should not be in selfish ambition, but it should be to gain and to glorify God in Christ Jesus. So um I wanted to come to you guys today and go over, um, for instance, God told me a while ago that he wanted me to paint. Um, he wanted to me to paint my grief. He wanted me to paint things that I was dealing with within inside of myself in order for him to heal me. I never knew that I was a painter. I never knew that I had that gift. I knew I was prophetic. I knew that I, you know, I could see in the spirit. But I did not know that I could paint, y'all. I didn't know that. So um, I kept seeing myself painting. And on this, e I was literally sitting on a stool. And there was an easel in front of me. And I was painting. And every time I would paint, um, God would give me a vision of what it is that he wanted me to paint. And the word that he was giving me um, with that painting. And so after about two weeks of toiling with God and going back and forth, y'all, me and God had this relationship, right? And he knows his daughter. But um, after all that, I say, okay, God, I'm going to go pick up canvases. So I felt like it would be very fitting instead of me telling you, you know, the painting that I did few, a few days ago, which we'll get to, and all the other paintings that I've had so far. Um, I thought it would be fitting for me to first start with the very first painting. Um, and then just talk to you guys about that one and exactly what God was giving me in that and i hope it, i hope it really reaches someone today so my very first painting okay you guys i'm not gonna feel any type of way about it you know i was an amateur i'm still i still am you know i'm not uh taking it i haven't taken any art classes or anything like that but all of this is holy spirit led so this painting here represents um, the miscarriages that I had. So I had a baby three years ago. Um, she weighed one pound and three ounces. Um, she came three months early. And that was around the start of me coming to God. 
me really giving my life to God and him showing me who he was in so many different ways. But um, I don't, you know, to say for the for for time's sake, I will go over the struggle. Um, I am going through a divorce as well. And I'm, I'm almost a year in separation. And um, I will come to you guys about that too. But one of the things that I, I dealt with during our relationship, um, and I didn't know I was dealing with it until now, until recently, within literally like the past six months, I didn't know that I had so much pain um, buried inside of me about my miscarriages. Um, my second daughter, who was 13, I went into preterm labor with her at six months, um, put on bed rest, was in the hospital for a week, and I dealt with a lot with that situation. And then later on, um, I was a surrogate for a family and uh, I had the in vitro done. Um, that lady's egg, her sperm, um, they, you know, with the in vitro, I had three embryos implanted or transplanted or whichever way you say it. And um, I did miscarry all three of those babies. Um, so I had that miscarriage. Um, and that was to help a family who had, I think they had over 20 miscarriages. The lady was about almost 50 years old. And um, it took me a couple of months to agree to it, but I did go ahead and do it. <laughs> and my body miscarried those babies. And then um, in my marriage, we tried to have a child um, and I miscarried twice. So the first time that I miscarried, it was devastating. Um, okay, so this is where it gets real, y'all. Even thinking about it now, I don't even know. I'm still about to cry about it. But yeah, so my first miscarriage, I was really upset. Um, God gave me a dream a couple of weeks before I even found out that I had a miscarriage. And I saw the baby leave with this man. And um, he asked to leave and I was debating whether or not to let him go. And I, something in the dream said, trust this man. Even though I couldn't see the man, I could just see my little boy who in the, in the dream was a little boy holding the man's hand. And um, he asked if he could go with him. And I told him, you can go. And I cried and I cried in the dream, but I felt so secure in the man that my child left with. Um, a couple of weeks later, I say about a week or two later, I received a call um, letting me know. No, I went to the hospital and we actually had an ultrasound and the baby was dead. No heartbeat, no anything. And I was about three, three and a half months pregnant. Um, that was very hard for me and my husband because we wanted a child. And then, um, you know, um, they gave me the medicine to allow my body to abort the baby um, without them doing a DNC and surgically going inside to take the baby and take the embryo out. Um, so I took the medication and I give it about, you know, a week or two. My body flushed the baby out unbeknownst to me because this is the thing they tell you, you know, you might pass it in the restroom, you may not even know or whatever the case, but I actually was taking a bath. I was in the bath and um, I was super depressed during that time when I lost this baby. So not only that, I was, you know, had to pass the baby and all this and I was taking a bath and I stood up to get out of the bathtub. Um, my husband was at the convenience store, uh, uh, grocery store, store, something like that at the time. And um, I stood up and the baby, the embryo, fetus, I'm going to call it a fetus. It's not embryo. It's a fetus. It was actual fetus. Um, the fetus fell out um, into the tub and I literally saw like the eyeball. I could see a little bit of the uh, phalanges uh, of the baby in the blob of blood. I had a blob of blood that fell out. It was a big glop and I could see the parts of the baby and I could see the black, the black for the eye and it's it scared the dickens out of me you know you think of a person who never i've never seen the fetus out of me you know so it's different from having a miscarriage and you just bleed and you don't you don't know you just know you miscarried an embryo but at this time i had miscarried a fetus um and so i stood up 
and I just screamed and I, I scooped my baby out of the tub. And I scooped my baby out of the tub. I called my husband at the time and I told him, you know, the baby, I just got the baby out of the tub. I was frantic and I was crying and just, you know, losing it. Okay. And he got, he came home with the quickness. I think he was already on his way anyways, but he came home and I honestly don't think he knew what to do. So, um, this is the part of my testimony that I haven't really shared with that many people. And it's not to uh, shed any bad light on anyone, but it's to give you the truth of my testimony. And um, he came in and he saw it and he saw me panicking. <laughs> so, you know how guys get like, oh, Lord, she, what is going on? She's losing it. Oh, no. And then they see the baby and all that. So he um, he picked it up and he wrapped it in tissue. I honestly thought that, you know, maybe he's going to the bathroom to just wrap it and get it out of my sight because I'm freaking out. I'm losing it. I'm crying. Y'all, I'm losing it. This is my baby with my husband, my first baby with him. Um, so, you know, this was very important to me. Um, where It was just very important to me. It was just very important. And um, he went to the bathroom and I heard a flush. Um, he didn't say anything, but I heard the toilet flush and, um, the, you know, our baby was flushed down the drain, down the toilet. And that had to be the most devastating thing that ever has happened to me. And, um, it was one of them. And I didn't really notice how devastating it was until I watched like a sitcom, a sitcom of a show and she had this, you know, situation, a miscarriage and all this other stuff. And I started feeling all this stuff come up out of me. And then just recently, um, at the beginning of this year, I, I kept thinking about hearing my baby go down that drain and being flushed down the toilet. And, um, it just broke me. And I was like, God, why did you, first of all, I was mad at him. So I was like, God, why would you let this happen to me? Why would he do that? And not even in the midst of that, but also a separation. Lord, why would you allow this to happen to me? And I was like, I saw my baby. You let my baby go. You know, when you're going through all this stuff and God is like, hey, this is an area in your, in your, in your life that you need me to heal you. I had to give it to God and allow him to heal me. It doesn't mean that it does not hurt, but... I can move on from the situation and see my blessings. I can also move on from the situation and forgive my ex um, for what happened. Even though it hurt me, even though it did, I didn't agree with it, I still had to forgive him. And, uh, and not only that, I had to forgive, um, not forgive God, but in a sense, forgive to let go and to let God and to trust him, even though I went through something that was very hurtful. So shortly afterwards, we got pregnant again, and um, we're still trying, still trying to have a baby, and I had another miscarriage. And with that one, I was really numb. So um, I actually had a DNC, and they surgically removed um, that baby from my womb. So I, made, I created this painting um, to heal the very first part of my hurt. Um, so this represents the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is in me. And the it also kind of represents the spirit of my babies. So this one represents, this piece right here represents the first miscarriage. As you can see, it's very vibrant, but it's still, it's still coming up from darkness because, you know, the womb is dark, the womb is dark and things like that. But not only that, but because there was so much hurt behind it in that loss. And as I was losing that loss, it, you know, I saw my child going up with this man, which represents heaven to me. So this is kind of like the spirit of my baby, the blood that I saw in the water, um, the Holy Spirit that's within me and the spirit of my child leaving. This represents just God's light. 
um, still shining and still very present in the middle of my heartache, in the middle of my pain. And here, this is a representation of the second miscarriage. As you can see, it's so dim. There is much more darkness. There was so little light that was in me. I wasn't saved at the time. I still was receiving a lot of prophecies and things like that for people. Um, God was still speaking to me for other people, showing me things that were to come. And But I hadn't surrendered to God. I didn't have a relationship with God, really. Uh, truthfully, my life wasn't his. I was still in the middle of sin. and um, But either way, when I lost this child, I just felt like nothing was right. I just felt like... Um, here we go. You know, here we go again. God, you taking something else. And I felt so numb. So this represents the numbness that I felt. Um, very less vibrant. I felt detached from this child. Not that I didn't want the baby. I, I really wanted the baby. But you know how you so hurt and then um, you kind of just expect the worst. So that's kind of what happened. I just expected the worst and I just let it go. And so this is a representation of the miscarriages. And I named this one unframed loss. And I named this unframed loss because all throughout that time, I never had a moment to really just think about the miscarriages and really just think about what, what has happened. And I never had a moment to frame my babies. So I named this unframed loss years ago, not knowing that I would actually paint a canvas and have something to actually frame my babies with. The only thing that I wrote was a poem. And um, the poem that I wrote was about these babies and um, how it felt during that miscarriage. And uh, you know, you guys, I never really understood what women felt when they had miscarriages. Um, all before that, you know, I was just like, oh, that's horrible. Like, I'm sorry for you. Even when I agreed to be a surrogate, um, I just like, you know, that's horrible. I'm sorry that you went through that. So I would um, have sympathy for them and I would empathize with them, but I couldn't relate until it happened to me and how soul crushing that is to lose a child. And not just in the states of, you know, the first couple of weeks of development, but you've, you've hit that third month. You know, your gut is starting to come out in a month, in a month and a half or so. You'll be able to figure out the sex of the baby. Um, you can see your baby moving around in the ultrasound. So it was very, very, very devastating and hurtful. But then what it made for me is other people's uh, testimony and um, pain that they were going through contextual. So I was able to relate to them um, in context to what they were speaking about. And then also um, able to give them some insight from what God had given me. So yeah, you guys, this is my very first painting. And um, I just appreciate God so much. And there's so much more that I have to share. Um, but I really appreciate his love, his grace, his mercy how he's forever with us um as you as you all know like he still blessed me with the baby he still blessed me with monroe um my three-year-old he still blessed me and i went through a lot of heartache with that um if you go back and you see the video i have a video that's uh monroe's testimony um that goes over what i went through with her and everything but in that situation God showed himself to me in so many ways. And I feel led right now by the Holy Spirit to give you guys an example. And I only give this, I, I've actually only given this when I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me to say it. So for instance, you already know I had the two miscarriages with my husband. And then we had the issues with Monroe, my three-year-old who is living and doing well. Um, but for instance, when I was pregnant with her, um, I had IUGR, intrauterine growth restriction, and my baby just was not growing. Um, she was about five weeks delayed in her growth. Her legs were really short when she was born. Um, she was on a ventilator. She had a 100% oxygen. Um, 
y'all there was so much she had surgery in her eyes they thought she was going to have down syndrome or either be stillborn or uh be a dwarf or have triploidy um there was a hole they said she had a hole in her heart there was so many things that was going on it was crazy but when we were pregnant with her um for a couple of months i barely had any amniotic fluid so i don't know if you guys know what it looks like to see an ultrasound but when you look in an ultrasound you see a lot of black right and then you see the little speck of light or a little speck of white in there and that's the baby floating around and doing whatever they do in the amniotic fluid so if you can imagine seeing an ultrasound you know, I'm already a couple months pregnant, you know, three, four months pregnant around the same time that I lost these babies. And um, my amniotic fluid was about this much. And then you can see the baby. So you see all the other tissue, one little strip of black representing the amniotic fluid. And then there was literally my baby right there. So everything was kind of like the same color. Everything was white. Instead of you seeing the black like you were supposed to, uh, which represents the amniotic fluid, they, you would just see the white, which is like tissue and all that. And um, the doctor was like, you know, I'm going to have to do an amniocentesis. I don't know why you're not producing amniotic fluid. I wonder if something's wrong with your baby's kidneys, if she's not producing uh, bowel and, and um, urine. And if she is, then it's getting caught in this amniotic fluid. And there's not enough to filter out the toxicities, um, toxicity that comes in urine and bowel. So there was a lot of things with that that the um, doctor was trying to figure out. I had the amniocentesis done, okay? So he was just like, it's going to be a miracle. And I know for sure this doctor was atheist, okay? Don't ask me how I know. That's a whole nother story, but it is what it is. It doesn't matter. I still pray for him, um, and I pray for myself too during this time. But um, he's like, um, you know, if for you to get amniotic fluid, it's going to have to be a miracle, like, there's no way they can insert you with amni amniotic fluid. There was no way for the, my baby to live without the amniotic fluid. You have to have it. So um, one day I, when I was in the military, I was driving home and I had an open vision, um, literally where I see naturally in the spirit, na in the natural, in the spirit. So I see it with my eyes uh, casted before me and I saw myself pouring water on my stomach. And what I and I ask God, I sometimes you just know that it comes from God. I don't know how to explain it to you, but there is something in your your spirit that tells you that it is from God. It is an a, a sure authority of what has been set inside of you. So I saw that in the spirit, and then I I said, Lord, if that was given, if this vision was given from you by you, God, please let me know tonight when I pray. Um, what I should do and why I received this God I just that's simple a simple simple prayer in my car and then I got home that night and I prayed and what the Lord told me in my prayer was to literally get water and he said pray over this water for seven days I heard him I heard him this time in the prayer tell me this and he said pray over this water for seven days um after you pray over it I need you and your husband to pour this water over your stomach after the seventh day. And I need you to pray in the spirit. He said he he told he specifically told me to pray in the spirit while my husband poured it over my stomach. And he said it was it was a must for my husband to be in position to um do that at the time. And I said, Yes, Lord. Um, I felt like it was crazy. If you know anything about when God tells you to do something, sometimes listen, it don't be making no sense. It don't be making no sense in the natural, okay? Um, but I was so desperate. I said, Lord, out of the, all the other, other things that I've seen and the things that you brought me through thus far, remember, I was at the beginning of my, you know, being saved or coming to God or surrendering or whatever way you want to put it. Um, I said, like, God, I'm just going to do it. And, you know, even with that insecurity about what God was telling me to do, I talked to him, my um, my husband, and I just asked him, you know, look, this is what God told me to do. This is the instruction that he gave. 
And um, he already knows that I see, he knew I was seeing when we was in seeing, you know, so he's already used to a whole lot of stuff, you know, in the spirit. And he also has a grandmother that's an evangelist. So it wasn't um, weird to him. It wasn't weird to him. He just said, well, we don't have anything to lose. So if God told you to do it, then do what he said, do. Okay. So I was like, wow you know i was expecting some fight back i was expecting. Are you sure this sound crazy why would god tell you to do that but he was just like look we ain't got nothing to lose like what just do what the lord said so i did what the what god said and um that seventh day um we prayed in the spirit i stood in the sh in the tub in the shower and he sprayed the uh the water over my belly and I gave God all the glory and the praise. And I said, God, I don't understand what you are doing right now. But whatever it is, God, I surrender myself to you. I surrender my soul to you. I surrender my spirit to you, God. Um, be it unto me, God. Be it unto me, Lord. And glorify. And God, I pray that you be glorified in everything. God, I'm being obedient at this point. I don't know what I'm doing, Lord, but I'm being obedient. We're being obedient, God. Please honor Please honor us in this obedience. Y'all, when I tell you, I think I might actually have the ultrasound pictures downstairs. But when I tell you, I had an ultrasound scheduled for about two days after this seventh day because they had me go back to the hospital every seven days um, because I was high risk. I was already high risk. So they had to keep a really close eye on me. Anyways, within like two days i had the ultrasound done and my entire belly was full when i say full i mean plenty plentiful of amniotic fluid my belly was my belly was full of amniotic fluid when i had a slither a slither and then all this black appeared, you know, I see it on the big screen on the wall. I see our ultrasound and I'm looking up there and I, you guys I don't even like to say swear, but I, I'm telling you when I saw that, I didn't know what to think y'all. I did not know what to think. How, how a week ago I had nothing. I was scared that she was even breathing. I was like, how, like, I know it's through, you know, the umbilical cord and things like that. But I'm just like, like, how, 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 but supernaturally, this is supernatural, supernaturally, God filled my womb with the amniotic fluid in order for my baby to survive. And we saw it manifest in, in front of us when the rest of the doctors and all that did not know what instruction God gave us. But we saw that happen literally in our eyes with an instruction that God gave us the week prior. Y'all, I wanted to praise break in that place. Do you hear me? That doctor said, huh? That, I mean, he literally, he looked at the ultrasound. He said, huh? That's strange. He was like, hmm, well, I I guess we don't have that problem no more. And I, I literally, I just, like, you know how you have those surreal moments and you look at the person that's beside you like, oh. Like that, that's kind of what me and my ex did. We kind of looked at each other like, do you see God? And so when I got in that car, y'all, I was just crying and praising God. And I was just like, Lord, how did you do this? And then at that point, y'all, I didn't even care. I wanted to share it with my friends and my mama and everyone and say, look what God did. Look what he told us to do. And we were obedient and he blessed us. So I, I wanted to give that testimony um, only because I felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me. Because uh, sometimes I'm a little vague with my testimony and I don't go into details sometimes, which I feel like the full effect sometimes of our testimony is in us telling the details. Um, but that was one of the details um, of that situation that happened um, that I just saw God manifest in my life and in his word. And I, it made me feel secure. That was actually one of, actually, you know what? That was one of the most beneficial points 
are times in my life that led me to this moment today. So thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Um, I just noticed that. That was one of the first instructions that were that was really crazy and weird to me um, that I had to follow. And um, I think it kind of led me to the place that I am today. I have plenty more stuff that happened that, you know, God showed himself. But that was one of the first ones. And it, and it made me stop questioning the things that I did not understand. Because, you know, the scripture tells us not to lean onto our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge him. In all of our ways, we may not understand what is happening. We may not understand why God is telling us to do these things. But in, a, in all of our way, in all of our ways, we are supposed to acknowledge him. And so, um, even in your mis, even in your misunderstandings, even in your uh, lack of understanding, even in your um, efforts to understand, um, even in your own efforts to um, get a revelation of what God is doing, sometimes you just need to wait and see that um, if we just be obedient and we be patient and we just do what the Lord is um, requiring for us to do, he will manifest himself without our help, <laughs> without our understanding in our lives. If we are just submitted to him and if we surrender to his will and humble ourselves um, before him and um, give God the, the space to be God. So let God be God. Um, I don't know how I got to that, but let God, whoever that is for, I'm telling you right now that if you are dealing with something in your life, you're dealing with a call because this is a season where God is pushing his people to go out, to spread the word and do according to his will, do what it is that he said his will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. So if he has called you to something, you need to stand on that ground. You need to stand in your place. You need to be the salt of the earth and spread the good news and do what the Lord has required you to do in this season because everything has a reason. Everything has a reason. You may not understand what it is. You may not understand why, but I'm telling you that when God takes you to a place, he has a reason to to just catapult you to where he wants you to be, but not for your glory, not for your sake, but for the sake of his name, but to edify his name and show that the father is real. Um, his spirit is real. What he gives you is real. His direction is real. You need to allow his Holy Spirit to consume you. You need to allow his Holy Spirit to consume you. Allow his spirit to speak to you. Allow his spirit to guide you. And every time you follow what God is telling you to do, he's leading you to do, he will ultimately, he will ultimately get the glory. He will ultimately manifest his glory in your life. By you being in agreement with him, you are already set up to have victory. You are already set up to, to walk in the full uh, sonship, the full um, inheritance that God has already given to his people. And so um, I'm just going to read that one more time. And I just want you guys to really think about the salt that you are. Um, think about the testimony that I gave about the painting and how God in this one specific, my very first one, and y'all, I got so many. Um, and God keeps giving me ones. And I, I'm behind on paintings. Like, I have visions. And I'm like, Lord, I got to keep up. Because I'm trying to work. I'm trying to do all this. I'm trying to keep up with all these things that you're giving me to say and to do. But um, I just want to be, I just want to start off by being obedient. And not just moving in, um, moving in the call and being salty. You know what I'm saying? Being salty in the other areas in my life that he's called me to. But to... Um, stay focused, stay focused on not the materialistic and then the ambition and all the other things that we get, you know, we, we're we stuck on sometimes because that's what we see. That's what we expect. And we also think that that's the manifested glory of God in our lives when we're blessed in finances, when we're ambitious, but it's not the manifested glory in our lives. It's us glorifying him. 
the manifest of glory in, in our lives is us humbling, humbling ourselves so that he may be increased in us, that he may be more in us than we are in this world. So I'm done preaching y'all. I'm just going to go. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back to the saltiness. And I just want to end on what I started with because I believe that God's word um, will help somebody and it will be a, a, a seed that's planted that only God can water. So I'm just going to give you the word. I'm going to say a prayer and then I'm just, you know, going to end this video, you guys. So this is Matthew, the fifth chapter, the thir 13th verse through the 16th verse. It states, God's people make a difference. This is the subtitle that they have. Yet are the salt of the earth. Yet ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under feet of men. You are the light of the world. A city, we're a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house or in that house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, but not for them just to see your good works for you, for them, for those good works to be, to glorify you, but that those good works glorify your father, our father, God, Yahweh, Jehovah, our father, which is in heaven. Our Abba Father. Um, so that is the word, you guys. I I do feel like I've said everything that the Holy Spirit has asked me to say and everything that God has led me to say. I thank him for his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, um, who came into this world so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And I pray that we have it more abundantly, even though we go through trials and tribulations, even though we go through pain, even go, even though we go through things that we don't want to even let people know that we went through. I pray that God be glorified right now in the mighty name of Jesus. So God, I just pray. I just want to pray to Lord over every single person who has taken out the time to listen um, to this, to this, what you've given me, God. I pray, I pray, dear God, that we decrease, Lord, that we forget about our own selfish ambition, our own vanity, and everything else in us, dear Lord, um, that is for our own gain. And God, can Lord, help us to bring people to you. Help us to to edify your name, the Lord. Help us to be the light in this world, dear God. Help us to be the salt of this in the, of this world, dear God, that we may bring saltiness and good flavor and good savor of the Lord, dear God, to other people, dear Lord. I pray, Lord, that whoever is listening to this, God, I pray, dear God, that it may it may connect with somebody, God. Lord, if it's just one, dear God, I give you the praise and I give you the glory, Lord, for using me, for using me, a sinful, a extremely sinful person, dear Lord, that you have brought me out of sin, dear God, and into your light. And dear God, I pray that my testimonies and the things that I've gone through, dear God, even though they were sinful and full of pride and, and not full of you, dear God, and full of everything that you hate. But God, you still saw that I was worthy enough to save. God, you still see your people. You see your people there, God. You see the people that have been 
called to you. You see the people that you have called, dear Lord. You see the people that are being chosen, dear God. And dear God, I pray that as they are chosen, dear God, that you send them, that you send them to be the salt, that you send them to be the light, dear Lord. I pray to God in our testimonies and our hurt and our pain and even in the joy, dear Lord, and it, even in the good parts of our life, dear God, where you manifested your glory in every single aspect, dear Lord. I pray to God that we share it. I pray, dear Lord, that we that we are laborers, dear Lord, that we are co-laborers, dear Lord. And I just pray to God that you, that you be glorified. I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that your Holy Spirit, that I pray for anyone who does not have your Holy Spirit. I pray that tonight they may ask for your Holy Spirit, dear God to be in them. And I pray that God, that you give them your spirit, dear Lord, and that they start to see and to feel and to hear and to um, envision their God and just have an experience with your spirit, dear God, the way that I did. So I pray and I give you glory, dear Lord, for every single thing that you have called us to do. I praise you. I give you glory. I lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. All right. I love you guys. And y'all know I'm a crier. I am a crier. Okay. It did. I It took everything for me not to cry in this video. And you'll see tears forming. But I just, I just praise God so much. And, um, I just want to be obedient and I, I want to make him smile and whatever that is, whatever that is, God, I hope. And I pray that um you be glorified in everything that we do in jesus name i pray amen all right love you guys Mwah.